Hello and good afternoon. Um, my name is Jan Gerlach. I am a lead public policy manager at the Wikimedia Foundation, which is the nonprofit that hosts Wikipedia. We are um, a affiliated participant of the network of centers that research internet and society. And I'm today very excited um, to be interviewing Stanley and Leanne from the Swedish Law and Informatics Research Institute. Um, we are um, sort of so sort of joining this call at the um, occasion of the IGF happening this year virtually. Um, the IGF is usually um, a place where the network of centers community comes together to um, update each other and exchange thoughts and, and, and um, stories um, about the research and, and um, find uh, collabor collaborators. A very exciting thing. This year, unfortunately, we're all virtual, we're all remote, but I'm nevertheless very excited to meet uh, you, Leanne and Stanley. And maybe you can start by telling me a little bit about yourself and what you actually do at Erie. Yeah, hi, I am Leanne Colonna and I'm a postdoc researcher at the Swedish Institute for Law and Informatics. Um, I have been at the Institute for almost 10 years now. Um, I started off as a doctoral student and now I'm just about to finish up my postdoc um, at the Institute. And I'll tell you more about that in a few minutes. Yeah, great. Uh, my name is uh, Stanley Greenstein and I am a uh, senior lecturer at the Department of Law, Stockholm University, and also associated with uh, IRI, the Swedish Law and Informatics Research Institute. Uh, and I've been at the Department of Law since 2006. Uh, and also during this time, I've been involved with, uh, with ERI uh, and uh, what ERI does. Great, thank you. Great to have you. I'm very excited to meet you today. Leanne, do you want to talk us through um, your work a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to share my screen now. And if you want to jump in, I know you wanted this to be like a more informal conversation. So I don't want to just talk, talk, talk. So jump in at any time. Um, I just didn't want to forget to tell you about any of the exciting stuff we're doing. So I just thought I would say a few words about Stockholm University, which um, is one of Europe's uh, most dynamic is, is located in Stockholm, one of Europe's most dynamic um, capital cities. Um, it's, a, it's a world class city, but with a small ta town vibe. Um, at Stockholm University, we have 34,000 students, 1,700 doctoral students, and 5,000 members of the staff. Um, the Faculty of Law is the biggest law faculty within Sweden, both in number of researchers and both in number of students. And Erie is located at the Department of Law. So we're an independent research unit within the Department of Law at Stockholm University. Um, our work is led by, on the one hand, this executive board where there's, I think, seven or eight members, um, and we also have a director, which is Professor Peter Walgren. I will get to talking about his work in a little bit. Um, our work actually started, um, the, or the Institute, the activities of the Institute started already in 1968 and have to have been largely project oriented since. Um, we were one of the founders of the Swedish Association for IT and Law, which was formed in 1981. Um, our institute was, um, I should mention that our institute was founded by um, Professor Peter Sapel, who's really truly um, a legendary figure. Um, he had so much vision to be talking about digitalization and computerization already uh, at su such an early point in time. Um, we at Erie, or Erie was one of the initiators of the Trust for Legal Informatics, which is this consortium of about 20 really key um, uh, public bodies, like uh, the Law Association, um, uh, the Parliament, the Bar Association, the Court Association, and um, we um, initiated the formation of this group and um, for a very long time, we headed up the, the, the Trust for Legal Informatics. Um, we are also, as of 2019, we're one of the founding members of AI Innovation of Sweden, 
which is this national initiative to um, accelerate research and innovation surrounding um, artificial intelligence. Um, aside from um, research, Erie is definitely engaged with teaching. And I think one of the coolest things that we do is we have um, uh, a mandatory uh, course in the undergraduate degrees. So it's all of the students that come through the Department of Law have to study law and information technology. So this is not an elective course, this is mandatory. Um, and it comes at the, at the end of their studies because it requires um, a high level of knowledge. Um, yeah, we administered a master's program for a really long time. Um, that's, that, has, that ended a couple of years ago, but we're working on another one right now. And you know, overall, I can just say that Erie is considered a national center of excellence within the field of law and IT. Yeah, okay. Oh, sorry, I, I forgot the slides. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know, maybe I will be quick here. I just, I just wanted to briefly mention like the, the kind of from a substantive perspective, the things that we're working with. So in Scandinavia, we kind of conceptualized um, there being two different branches of law and technology. So on the one hand, we have information communications technology law, and this is like way more legally orientated. This is like the side where lawyers feel more at ease, I would say. So this is like, we take uh, technology and we try to look at, okay, how can um, you know, we remedy legal problems that arise from the use of this technology in society. So this is like things like electronic signatures, data protection, computer crimes, computer contracts, things like that. Um, and like I said, I think this is like the side where lawyers feel more comfortable. The other side of what we consider as um, law and IT in Scandinavia is this more, much, much more technical orientated side, which <clears throat> you can call uh, information technology for lawyers, AI in law, legal informatics. So um, here topics would include um, development of legal knowledge ma management systems, knowledge management, models of legal argumentation, legal ontologies. So this is like, um, things like how can we use AI automation to support e-government, write contracts, do the tedious work of document review. Uh, so where do, you, where do you use it then? Yeah, that's interesting because I think I came in, uh, my, my, my doctoral thesis is very, um, I think more on the traditional side, very uh, dogmatic, uh, uh, focused on the data protection. And now I'm, I'm getting much more interested in the second side as my postdoc really concerns privacy by design and how do we embed privacy into computer systems. It, um, so I think mm -hmm. a lot, I'm working a lot more with engineers. Yeah. Um, yeah, so back to Scandinavia. So Scandinavia, um, you know, is really big. We're really, I think, ahead when it comes to digitalization in general. Um, and we, we have, uh, we work really closely or with our, with our neighbors in Finland and in Norway and in Denmark. And every year we have this Nordic conference and it kind of shifts each year between one of the different countries. And this year it's in Stockholm. Registration is um, technically over, but if anyone is you know, really eager to attend, I'm sure we can make that happen. Shoot me an email. And um, the topic is law uh, in the era of AI. Um, Busy days ahead for you then, huh? Yeah, we were gonna have it in real life, but now, now I think we're down to five. The the rules here in Sweden just changed last week, so it's kind of a bummer. But yeah, we're we're gonna do it online. The show must go on. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> um, right. So this, uh, I'm just gonna now. I'm gonna talk about some of the projects that we're working on at Erie. I'm gonna begin with my own project, PAL, Privacy Aware, Acceptable Life Logging Services for Older and Frail People. So just really quick, um, there's this global phenomenon, population aging, we're all getting older, that's great, but it's gonna put a lot of strain on our um, healthcare systems. So um, the aim of this project is, well, how can we develop um, tools, uh, life logging technologies, you know, basically sensors in the home, worn on the body, possibly ingested, um, ways that we can 
uh, monitor individuals within the home environment uh, in order to support their health, their well-being, their independence. Um, the thing is with these technologies is that they're very privacy invasive and also older people are quite like they don't want to use them. They, they are like, this is big brother stuff. We don't want to use it. So um, not only are there legal problems, but there's just like users don't really want to adopt to the technology. So this um, project, it's, it's very multidisciplinary. We have engineers, we have human computer interaction scientists. Um, we have me representing legal and we're trying to um, develop life logging technologies that are acceptable and privacy aware. So I just mentioned I'm working with Privacy by Design, and this is just um, an example of some of the stuff that's being developed within the project. So like maybe you're monitoring your mom at home and uh, you know she's, she's okay with this monitoring because uh, she's worried she's gonna fall. And, uh, but maybe if she falls in the shower, she doesn't want, you know, just anyone to see her naked. So you can, you know, kind of turn that, that woman into some kind of avatar or make her invisible and that or make her into some kind of exoskeleton. And that can all depend on, you know, the level uh, that she can make those settings. So if it's, you know, her son, it's okay. She can see everything, but if it's a, a nurse, maybe, you know, she wants to see a silhouette. Mm -hmm. um, very timely if, if i can jump in there in there is is this something that you're working on with um with um a, a medical school also or or does this expertise all sit within within erie no this the the people that are doing the computer vision stuff come from the university of alicante mm. so um that is um i list their names here right um, uh but um but fundamentally, uh, I would say this is an example of privacy by design. So they are meeting a legal requirement. Um, um, yeah, but I will continue on talking about that because that leads me to the next point. So um, University of Alicante, Francisco Flores Re Revolta. Um, I, we are also going to work together with them on this next project that I'm super excited to talk about because we are um, looking for um, uh, some doctoral students to, to join the project. So visual is this um, really cool Marie Curie ITN, which I don't know if you're familiar with the Marie Curie doctoral programs, but they are the most prestigious and um, uh, they're just highly recognized the quality level. They're really, uh, really looking for excellent students because they are gonna be part of this incredible training network where we have 15, we're gonna recruit 15 doctoral students. So um, a, a couple of them, three will go to University of Alicante, three will go to Aachen University. These are human computer scientists, the, the, the Alicante people, computer vision people. Um, we also have computer vision people at um, in Austria and you, you when um, we also have, um, you asked about, are there any medical people? And we have the School of Nursing at, um, at um in uh, um uh, in, in um, Trinity College in Ireland, so we're this uh, multidisciplinary consortium, and we're gonna each have three doctoral students, but they're all gonna work together really closely. There's gonna be there's all these different mandatory training schools and all these different um, internships that we have with different partner agencies like IBM, for example. So they're gonna be moving around, working together, um, really. Um, uh, strengthening their skills together and and it's very much uh, similar to what I'm doing in my postdoc we're developing tools to support um, uh, you know living at home independently for longer um, but mm -hmm. here is really specifically on um, computer vision uh, sorry I think I just have one more before I'm going to pass this on to Stanley um, and I just want to say um, <clears throat> so yeah I just want to say we are with the visual, we are recruiting the, we just extended the um, recruitment to November 30th. And we really hoped that you want to come move to Stockholm <laughs> <laughs> and work with us. Um, <clears throat> uh, I am also involved in um, these European cooperation in science and technology actions, which if you're unfamiliar with these, these, these are research networks. So this is not money for, um, uh, 
um, for doing research. It's money for building your network. So um, I'm the action vice chair in the Good Brother project, and I represent Sweden in the Net for Age Friendly project. And again, this is like developing um, technologies to assist with the population aging um, situation. And in brief, and but what what we are doing is. Um, we're setting up training schools, we're setting up conferences, there's opportunities for funding for um, short stays, like five day stays, if you want to go to one of the go and study at one of the partner organizations, one of the member organizations, you can go and do that, we'll pay for it. So all, all you need to, to do is contact your representative. So if you're in Sweden, you contact me and say you want to get involved. Um, and, and almost, I think we are 37 countries in Europe. So if you're in Europe, there's a good chance you can join the network if you're interested. If you're outside Europe, it's still possible to collaborate, um, but it has to be, the rules are a little bit more strict. Um, I will just leave it there. Uh, Stanley, you want to take it away? Yeah, thank you, uh, Leanne. Um, I can uh, just start by uh, mentioning that uh, at uh, ERI we have uh, two uh, professors who are eminent professors uh, uh, within the area of law and IT. They are professors uh, Peter Volgian and uh, Cecilia Magnussen Herber. And this is a project that uh, Cecilia Magnussen Herber is dealing with, uh, uh, which has to do with the notion of embedding uh, law in technology. Uh, so uh, earlier we, we saw those two circles, uh, IT law and uh, legal informatics. And this is the, the, the circle that Leanne showed to the right, where we uh, start uh, thinking in terms of uh, methodol methodological issues and how one can, uh, you know, what law is. Law is not only uh, text on paper, but law is any type of regulation. It can be technology. Um, it can be ethical guidelines or code, ethical codes. Uh, standardization is a type of regulation. So, yeah, we look at, well, you know, what is law? And then we try and build the law into, uh, into the technology. Uh, and this is just a, a project that Cecilia is dealing with that uh, has that as the main uh, goal, building privacy into uh, technology. If we go to the next slide, uh, Leanne, uh, this is a project that I am uh, working with, uh, explainable and ethical machine learning for knowledge discovery from medical data sources. Uh, and this is... Um, uh, in conjunction with some other institutions uh, here in Stockholm. So we have the, uh, co the Department of Computer Science at uh, Stockholm, Stockholm University and uh, KTH and uh, RISE. And uh, in a nutshell, the project entails a bunch of data scientists who are trying to extract knowledge uh, from medical data sets in order to be able to build predictive models to be able to predict, uh, for example, the adverse effects of uh, prescribed drugs, uh, or maybe trying to predict uh, cardiovascular disease so they can be treated uh, in time. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, it's a, a group of data scientists, and uh, I'm the uh, only lawyer in the group, which is fun sometimes, a little bit frustrating sometimes because we have all these technicians who want to surge ahead. And my role is to, on the one hand, kind of you know, slow down the project if uh, it's going too fast from the legal perspective, uh, make sure that uh, you know GDPR is adhered to, but also, uh, a, a, a main function of mine in this project is to uh, make sure that certain values, such as ethical values, are, are built into the technology. So to identify what uh, what values the technology should entail, and make sure that the data scientists then, you know, when they're building the prototype, take into account these values. Um, it can be contextual as well. You know, we have as the product being a black box which contains sensitive uh, data. If uh, 
if the patient wants to access the data, what kind of access rights should he or she have? Uh, if the medical practitioner wants to access it, you know, what access rights should entail. If an insurance company wants to access, maybe the access rights should be different. So it's once again, building in values and different uh, levels of uh, accessibility, uh, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, so that is the, the, the type of projects that we are involved with. So on the one hand, we, we do teaching, but we're also involved in projects and we are then able to take our experience from the projects into the teaching. Uh, lecture theatres as well. So uh, yeah, that's what I do. Fascinating. So so um, a lot of work actually for both of you, um, sort of bringing values, bringing regulatory aspects into technology. Very timely projects as well. I've I've seen. Um, and and um, but one thing that really stood out for me is that it seems at at your at your institute you're also a little bit of um, doing sort of. Um, the history of, of, of internet and society of, of law and internet and, and technology work, right? Um, given that um, it, you've been around, Erie has been around for, for more than 50 years. So I imagine for the other uh, centers um, at, in the network, there's a lot to learn from you. Um, and and um, this is definitely something that I would be, be interested in, in learning more myself. Like how does the, did this come about? Um, this thought of, of combining technology and the law um, mm -hmm. at a time when um, I would say it wasn't that, that fashionable yet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on that point, I can also just add that uh, I mentioned the two professors uh, here and they both wrote their dissertations within AI 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, they have had a lot of insight then, but they've also uh, have a lot of experience and uh, they've seen and been with all the ups and downs within the, this thing called artificial intelligence uh, uh, before the hype and now within the hype. <laughs> yeah, it, it takes a lot of um, uh, it takes a lot of breath to to follow through, right? It's one thing to be early, but then still being there when when there's a lot more attention to the topic that that is um, very hard. I, I I find fascinating. Um, well, I think this this was a wonderful overview. Um, it was it's great to meet you today. I think we're already at time, unfortunately, um, but um, we'll make the recording available um, and and of course happy to connect everybody to you um, who who reaches out. And um, again, thank you so much for for your taking the time today to chat with me. Great, thank you for the opportunity.